So today we're going to be talking about carbohydrates. And we're going to start by talking about carbohydrate monomers called monosaccharides. So carbohydrates, or sugars, are macromolecules that have a variety of important functions. They play an important role in energy, they contribute to cell structure, and they're involved in cell recognition and cell identity. And we're going to talk about their functions in the next video. Um, but carbohydrates can are really classified based on how many sugars are linked together. And so monosaccharides, or one sugar, are just one carbohydrate monomer. And disaccharides are when two of those sugars are linked together, and oligosaccharides are a few sugars linked together, and then polysaccharides, or many sugar, are large polymers. So all monosaccharides have four things in common. They have a molecular formula of CH2O. So for every carbon, there is two hydrogen and one oxygen. They have a carbonyl group, which is carbon double bonded to oxygen. And they have a hydroxyl group, which is the OH. And finally, they have lots of carbon hydrogen bonds. Okay, so we already talked about one sugar, which was ribose, right? That was the, the base of a nucleic acid, right? And on one side, it had its phosphate group, right, bound to the five prime carbon. And then you had your base, right, bound to the one prime carbon. And so here is ribose, that's that sugar, in its linear form. So it has five carbons, one, two, three, four, five. And for every carbon, there's two hydrogen, and, um, and they have, um, for every carbon, one oxygen, okay? So there's two hydrogen and one oxygen for every carbon. And then there's the carbonyl group at the end of the molecule. So we have that molecular formula, we have our carbonyl group, here's a bunch of hydroxyl groups to account for that molecular formula, and lots of carbon-hydrogen bonds. And as we'll talk about later, these sugars tend to form rings. Okay, so here's how you saw a sugar before when we talked about nucleic acids. And since carbonyl and hydroxyl groups, right, oxygen is polar, um, are present in the carbohydrates, these molecules are very hydrophilic, so they're easily dissolved in water or aqueous solutions. So monomers um, can differ from each other in these ways. So we already talked about what makes a carbohydrate a carbohydrate, right, the molecular formula, the carbonyl group, the hydroxyl group, and lots of carbon-hydrogen bonds. And that's pretty basic. So what makes one sugar different from another? What makes a glucose different from a galactose, for example? So what's going to change in, in the individual carbohydrates is the location of that carbonyl group, the carbon double bonded to the oxygen, the number of carbon atoms present, the spatial arrangement of their atoms. So one, one might have a hydroxyl group facing up, the other one might have it facing down, or linear versus ring forms, and when, that, when those form from a linear to a ring, it could change the position of certain groups. So let's break this down. So the location of a carbonyl group might be a way in which a sugar differs. So we took this three carbon simple sugar here, one, two, three, and here's the carbonyl group at the end of the molecule. So you can always number the carbons in a sugar starting with the one bound to the carbonyl group, Right? And so this is called an aldose. And then here, the carbonyl group, you still number this one one, is found in the middle of the molecule. So one, two, three, and um, you have the, this is called a ketose. And the number of carbon atoms present can also differ between the molecules. So we have a, a triose is a sugar with three carbons, a pentose has five, a hexose has six, and so on. Okay, so those were it number of carbons and um, the position of those carbonyl groups in the molecule. The monomers, or the monosaccharides, can also differ in the arrangement of their hydroxyl groups. So here's a molecule of glucose. It has six carbons, so one, two, three, four, five, six. The carbonyl group is at the end of the molecule. And here, on the fourth carbon, this hydroxyl group is pointing up. And in galactose, Right, here's, it's still six sugars, one, two, three, four, five, six. It has the same molecular formula. Um, it has a lot of carbon-hydrogen bonds, but on that fourth carbon, the hydroxyl group is pointing down. And that makes an entirely different sugar, right, which is going to give it a different function in the cell. And then the fourth way um, one monosaccharide can differ from another is in these, when it forms a ring. Okay, and we're going to walk through this in a little bit, um, but I want to give you an overview. So here's glucose again. It's a one, two, three, four, five, six carbon sugar. And I pointed out that the uh, 
carbonyl group is at the end of the molecule. And we have this hydroxyl group here um, bound to this five prime carbon. And what's gonna happen is that that line is gonna bend into a ring. And the hydroxyl group um, that's attached to the five prime carbon is going to um, create a bond with the one prime carbon, okay? And so what's gonna happen then is that this oxygen now that was bound to the five prime carbon is also bound to the one prime carbon. And this, what that was a carbonyl group is now going to get um, hydrogen, right? To kind of still account for that molecular formula. And when this ring forms, the, the um, hydroxyl group can point down and that's called the alpha form or alpha glucose. Um, but when the hydroxyl group points up, that's called beta glucose. And the reason I point this out is because alpha down or beta up is how we're gonna name the bonds that form between disaccharides. So let's just take a little bit of time to talk about how it forms that ring again. So here is a my representation of a glucose molecule. So we have um, our carbon backbone, we've got our carbonyl group, we've got our hydroxyl groups, right? And we have six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we know that essentially we can represent those carbons as a line where every um, bend in the line is that carbon. So I've just removed the carbons, okay? And I told you that the one um, prime carbon is going to bind to the five prime um, hydroxyl group. Okay, so here we go those are going to interact. And so what that leaves us is this carbon up here, right? Everything kind of bends with each other. And then it's going to go carbon, oxygen, carbon, where this is the one prime carbon into the ring, okay? And then that six is now going to stick up for the molecule. So that last carbon doesn't really belong in the ring. And then you can take off the carbons, but you can then put in the hydroxyl groups, right? And every, everywhere that there's not four bonds, there's another little hydrogen. I'm just not showing it in the ring. And this is the, the ring form of glucose, and this hydroxyl group is down, so it's actually the alpha form of glucose. So each monomer has a unique structure and function. Um, that was really the take home point. So the way in which these kind of form and these little differences can give it a specific function. And I just wanna point out that monosaccharides um, may have been synthesized under Earth's early conditions, although probably not you know, the first life molecule and sugars were found on meteorites and sugars formed in space rain down on Earth. And that sounds like something delightful. So I'm going to end this video with that. Okay, on to the next one.